Summoners, welcome on back. IPL 5 qualifiers, Taiwan. We're going to look at the finishing match of Group A. Taipei Assassins and All Lane Carry, both of them are walking into this match 2-0. Winner moves straight on out into the single limb champ bracket. The other one has to go to the wild card group to see if they can go ahead and climb their way out of that one. And you know what? It's it, Both these teams looking incredibly, incredibly strong. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, Taipei Assassins, you know, they're Taipei Assassins. Every time you watch them, it's impressive. All Lane Carry, they had done kind of a similar thing um, the first game against Tana. When they had played them, they, you know, just really stomped them very early on. So uh, we'll have to see. This is going to be, you know, for me, I don't know a lot about Olin Carey, but this is going yeah. to be like the test for, uh, you know, how strong of a team they are, how they can stand up to the best of the best. And, my, uh, you know, we'll see. My, my hair is still, like, being difficult with these headsets, man. It's like, like, you got, like, you get the, you get the two prongs on top. is just, like, sh shifting back and forth, like, like yeah, yeah, you know. All right. Then. It's, it's, yeah, no, it's, it's <laughs> minor complaint. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's just it's just being ready. Just being silly. I think I'm good. Shirt, I'm, shirt, old navy. Nice, nice. Jacket, IPL. <laughs> yeah. So uh, shirt, threadless. You know, we can just we can go on. Anyway, so have the pick bands here as well. So all in character going to go ahead, uh, going to go ahead and be on a uh, blue side. Alistair Morgana Ari bands, very yep. solid bands, very calculated bands. Then you know. Those are some of Taipei Assassin's strongest champs. They're, they're actually the three strongest champs. Yeah, so I would I'm say. sorry, who did they ban? Uh, Alstar, Morgana, and Ari. Okay, yeah. Um, you know, Morgana and Ari were banned yeah. the last game. They don't want to allow, you know, uh, that really just easy mid lane champion that beats everyone. And with yeah. high skill cap, you can just easily win team fights early on. Uh, Morgana, I've seen a couple of clips with Taipei Assassin's where they yeah. use the Morgana, and, you know, you have the really nice fight coordination. Yeah. is always a cool thing. See, Alistar, see our latest top five. Yeah, see our latest top five. Alistar, of course, is always, uh, you know, it's Alistar on it little balls. So, <laughs> And uh, Taipei Assassin's, their three bands. Wu Kong, Shen, and TF. I understand, you know, the Shen, the Shen ban is, you know, he's solid. TF, you know, he's been giving a lot of people trouble lately. I can, I mean, you know what? I can understand the Wu Kong ban because, you know, you see a lot of, you know, good coordination coming from Taipei Assassins, and Wu Kong's ult can be really disruptive for that. Yeah, it's um, it's interesting. So Shen and TF, uh, they banned, you know, both of those global champions. Um, you know, how do you counter aggression? Well, one way is you have globals. You have Nocturne, you have TF, you have Shen, who, when you have a gank, instead of it being a 2v1, you turn it into a 3v2, and all of a sudden you pick up kills. So Shen in the jungle would be a really strong kind of counter to what Taipei Assassins is trying to do. Mm -hmm. Nocturne even better. Nocturne is available. I would like to see a Nocturne, but uh, we'll have to see. Um, you know, uh, that that kind of counter uh, engage is really, you know, strong. And then, um, what was the last one? Wukong. Wukong, yep. a lot of people don't play Wukong, but he's actually really strong in the top lane and can easily win team fights by himself yeah i mean he's he's you know i definitely need to pick him up actually because you know every once in a while he's, he's hard to play though i've yeah. you know played him before and uh, against like a, a constant harass champion like gangplank or something in the top lane you can really struggle because he's he's a burst champion um you can't really you don't have any regen so you can't you know just go toe to toe with someone until you get some of your burst damage yeah so it's I mean, I'm gonna have to play him more. I'm definitely gonna have to play him more. But with that, you know, let's go ahead. Let's load this up. I'll go through the uh, the pick bands in order as well. So uh, ALC, they're gonna they're on first pick. They actually first pick out Lulu. Taipei Assassins in response actually goes uh, Grave Mundo, and then uh, after that, so ALC then follows up Corky Lee Sin. Probably have, uh, we got Lee. No, Lee's top lane actually here. Uh, Taipei Assassins Cassiopeia and Sona. So we're gonna look for the Grave Sona combo bot lane. A Mumu Annie in response by ALC and then rounding it out, Vladimir going on Taipei Assassins for sailing the top lane. Uh a Mumu, you know, got a note. He's been uh he's been coming back. He's been he's been definitely coming back in the jungle as of late. Yeah, and um actually that Nocturne pick, now that we have a Mundo, we have a little bit more of a uh, counter jungling presence, not so much of a ganking presence. Mm -hmm. It makes more sense to go um, you know, with more of a team fight jungler. Nocturne would definitely work as well. That's a common yeah. matchup. Well it's but, well, um, yeah, well Nocturne against Mundo, that's like almost right. that's almost always what you see. Yeah, but the issue with the Nocturne is you're going into a double AP uh Cassipia and Vladimir and you're mm -hmm. and Sona as well. So you're going into all this AoE and um, very quickly you're going to be weak in fights. So it's it's interesting to see that 
all in carry, they're actually going AoE versus AoE, and uh, Amumu, you know, is definitely really strong. They first picked the Lulu, which is fun because Taipei Assassins, they have used Lulu a number of times. Um, it can be a really strong pick, so you know, maybe they were concerned that Taipei Assassins would take that pick. One of our top five plays, they had the Morgana, Alistar, Lulu combo, and that was just really cool. But yep. um, right now, both teams kind of looking for an engage. Actually, Taipei uh, type Assassins coming in for this red while all in carry is uh, taking more of a defensive measure. But here's the thing, because, you know, Amumu, you know, to start out, you know, he's usually, you know, a blue starter. I and mean, he's really reliant on blue to, you know, upkeep with his jungle. Uh, he has a similar AoE uh, to Mundo, but, you know, Mundo, his uh, his fuel is health. Amumu, his fuel is mana. So he's going he's gonna to require a little bit more of that. But there you go. You see the invade going down from ALC. Oh, did we find blue. anyone? No. Nope. No, we did not. There you go. They're all here. <laughs> They're all right here taking the raise. Mundo's going to go ahead and secure the raise. I mean, Type A, they've got to imagine that this is the a pretty safe, uh, pretty safe uh, invade here because you know they, they're, they're thinking that Amumu's going to go blue, and they're right, just not their blue. The interesting thing about the way they're counter jungling is it's not very common to see um, engages after a counter jungle, but now they're actually there's a great opportunity that they're just going to walk Whoa. right into each other. Whoa. We do have uh, all four of them actually coming mid, seeing if they can come down. If they're still at that red, they're not going to catch them in time, so they will have to back off. So actually, they just kind of both skirt by each yep. other. But um, there was a huge opportunity there. Doesn't happen. So we'll go to the laning phase. And a, a lot of lane matchups are pretty interesting. Graves and Soda actually has a lot of burst damage. Um, but Lulu is, you know, one of the best dueling uh, support champions in the game. You can just easily win fights, turn it around with the shields and with your ultimate. So Lee Sin just now getting up into the top lane. And, uh, you know, Stanley, he's got a, he's, he's had some time. He's almost dinged. Yeah, there you go. Just ding too. So he's got a nice level advantage, you know, right from the get-go because Lee Sin had the big, the long walk all the way from, uh, from enemy territory up to the top lane. And, you know, you know, oh, right there, Graves getting chunked out pretty well from uh, from the Corky. But, you know, he's not doing too hot himself. He's chugging the pots, trying to keep the health up. And if you look at uh, if you look at Mundo right now, he's got the red buff. He's doing okay for himself. Amumu already has a blue buff. Probably going to look to stack it or maybe even give that to, to Annie more likely. Yeah, there you go. Let's go ahead and keep it for himself. Yeah, at this, at this point, you just want to take the experience for yourself. You really almost never pass off buffs at early levels, mm -hmm. particularly as someone like Amumu who can fall behind early. You need to get those quick levels. Um, in the meantime, we do see a gank coming up top, and we'll see whether or not That's Mundo can get in there because he does have really nice uh, chasing potential uh, and actually leaks in a little bit he out of position. does not have the safe. Oh, there we go. Now he bought the He waited. Did not have the safeguard, bought it, and then safeguards to a minion. Nice. Nice timing on to that. You can get squirrel going down on the Corky, but now looking to, looking to chase uh, Sona a little bit with the machine gun. Everyone, everyone in bot lane is really getting low. They're really getting aggressive. Yeah, and Corky first is Graves. He has the range advantage. He has, like, that upfront um, nuking capability, so it's actually a really mm -hmm. common matchup. Uh, Lulu, you know, with the Glitter Lance, actually can do a lot of uh, damage to Graves and also has that slow. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it is a pretty even matchup. Sona has the regen, so they have a little bit of a sustain advantage with those heals. Mm -hmm. Annie, in the meantime, being aggressive versus uh, Cask. Annie and Cass is actually always an interesting lane because it's it's a really even lane and it's it's really just a skill matchup for who wins. Mm. So I mean, what do, what does you know what does uh, Annie or Cass have to do to really gain the advantage here in mid? Because actually I'm, I'm considering playing Annie more because well, I, I still see a lot of Casses. The thing is, Cassiopeia, generally speaking, in lane will have an advantage. What you want to do is just uh, not allow Annie to get in. In the meantime, we oh, do see a Mundo gank, so there's a really easy way to get uh, an advantage <laughs> in the game. And actually, Cassiopeia going in for it forces the flash out of Annie. Uh, really nice job there. So Cassiopeia uh, has actually more damage than Annie and has more range. You can throw off your Qs as uh, Annie's kind of charging into you and then just constantly walk away. Mm -hmm. Or you can chase her down, but Annie has more burst. Um, and with the attack, you know, uh, Annie's attack is very strong oh, as well. Wow. Lulu does get ignited. Should be able to live from that one. You just go ahead and place a shield on yourself there. And is going to have no choice but to back. You know, Cork is going to go back with her too. And usually if your support backs, it's sometimes just a good policy just to back. You know, if you're playing the AD carry, to back as well. So you both re-enter lane, topped off. And here's Amumu waiting in the bush. 
waiting for Vlad to uh, get a little bit cheeky. But the thing, though, there's a huge wave. There's a huge wave pushing. There's no chance for Mumu here, or at least, you know, not as good as we normally have. But he's going to go ahead, get into the second bush for a little bit better positioning for the next wave. And Lee Sin should probably recall already. I mean, he's kind of putting himself in a vulnerable situation, but I think he, he's trying to bait out the Vladimir, getting yep. himself low. The issue is if Mundo starts to come up here and he's just wasting his time and not farming. And so Vladimir recognizes the bait. He's just going to sit back and gain a farm, ad farm advantage over Lee Sin, which is going to be really nice for him. In the meantime, Mundo, you know, just running around. He's doing his thing. Oh, he's waiting. He's way out oh, there. You go. You're gonna go ahead and spot the Mumu in the river, recognizing. Okay, he still got his blue buff. A little bit jealous. He's gonna go ahead and throw the axe. Like, yeah, you can go ahead and take that. But uh, still, though, no, no kills quite going down yet. But there is still a slight farm lead for Taipei Assassins here. Anyway, where is that? Where does that lead actually lie? You know, 35, you know, it's mostly top lane. You know, Vlad's got about 10 creeps it's, up it's on Lee bottom lane with Graves versus yep. Corky. And actually the oh, burst, there but there's Graves in pursuit of Corky, forcing him out of there. Yep. Uh, Corky is um, actually 10 CS behind uh, Graves. So, yeah, and, you know, and, and uh, Lee Sin is now 15 CS oh, behind wow, Vlad. Yeah, so, so it's like, it's just both. It's yeah. both. It's a little both. So uh, Lulu actually going to go ahead and also get a ward up here by Dragon Pink Ward at that recognizing that there's also a green ward down there. Going to go ahead and uh, reduce some of the vision. Amumu's going to have a little bit easier time getting into bot lane if he uh, decides to go ahead and get in there. He is, uh, Amumu is five, about a third of the way to six. So once Amumu gets that ult, those ganks are just going to become even more impressive. But he's got to go in first. You know, it's, uh, he did not get the opportunity you wanted top lane. And Mundo is actually just, you know, looking to sit behind and farm as well. Just to, wants to, wants to get big, wants to get beefy. And the big issue with Mumu is if you don't hit that bandage toss, it's really difficult to pull off yeah. anything. You're basically worthless. But, um, you know, once you hit six, it's very easy to hit it. The double combo with Annie and Mumu could basically kill the entire team. They will have to watch out for the Sona initiation because the, if they follow up Sona into Cassiopeia, then Taipei Assassins has more than enough damage. So, it, I mean, the fights, everyone's going to die extremely quickly once we get into the fights, which yeah. means that a lot of it's going to come down to the sustained champions. Uh, Vladimir, late game, you know, uh, his ability to live throughout those early fights and then, you know, constantly deal damage. And then the ADs and Lee Sin for their abilities to, you know, survive that initial burst and then, you know, win the longer fights. And also, you know, these are two very strong, very strong initiations from both of these teams. And whoever, whoever gets initiated Initiated upon first, they're going to be at a severe disadvantage as well because they may actually just not have someone. <laughs> There's going to be you know, melting to the timbers and to, yep. the, to the tears. And the, the, the one nice thing about um, all Lane Carry's team that they have an advantage over, both teams have this nasty AoE, but all Lane Carry has the Lulu. And Lulu, the ability to just make anyone almost unkillable, is going to be huge. We do see you know some nice grass exchange down bottom. But um, the, that ability, just throw off your shield, throw off your ultimate, and whoever's close to going down, you're like, nope, not going to happen. And then we have the Lee Sin shield as well. So we have a couple of shields. Um, you know, it, it'll very easily negate some of this burst damage that maybe all in carry can win some of these longer fights after uh, Taipei Assassins has blown, you know, their load, basically. Um, yep. Once Cassiopeia gets involved in the game, if Cassiopeia uh, is able to stay alive in fights, and Vladimir as well, their consistent damage is just going to be so difficult to deal with. So if uh, Alden Carey can't take down Cassiopeia in particular, they could really quickly lose fights. But um, as long as they burst her down, they'll be okay. Yeah, even then, yeah, one ult from Cass, one well placed ult. It's it's not it's the it's definitely one of the more tricky ults to try and land on a, on a team as well. I mean, it's, it doesn't have the biggest range, but it can be absolutely devastating if you can land it. Stun going down on the cast, but you know, there's some equal uh, Well, equal Annie's put himself change. out of position. Oh. Uh, actually has to back out. We have some damage going off from Cassiopeia, oh, almost getting the engage there. And Mumu, with the dissuasion, gonna help back out his pal. But uh, good, did, did pop the ult on Mundo. He wanted the extra move speed to go ahead and try and make something happen, but did not get it. Pings are going down. They may actually go ahead and attempt to drag it here. Cass can, Cass can actually take down objectives like Dragon pretty fast. So it looks like they may go ahead and try their luck sans graves. So the Taipei Assassin might be able to go ahead and grab this. The Glitterlands going down trying to steal something, but they do secure it themselves. But here is a Mumu with a very well-placed ult. Mundo, his ult is down, may not be able to get it. And there's the first blood going down for the Annie. He's still in pursuit. And there's a Cassiopeia ult getting Corky perfectly caught in there. But double kill going down on Annie will also be able to take out the snake. Advantage, uh, advantage, uh, 
Well, well no, all lane carry. Thing. It's it's well, yeah, advantage, know, advantage. They, they got all the kills. It's it's, it's just, yeah, they got all, okay, it's three kills. So yes. it's actually pretty much a wash really. Yeah, it is, but uh the the advantage the, the disadvantage for all lane carry is the fact that Vladimir gets to farm up top. Yeah. But um you know, the dragon, you know, clearly, but they uh they went even in gold in that exchange and both mid and bot are uh, ahead for all lane carry as a result of it. Yeah. The only issue is Vladimir is starting to farm. So um, the, the Vladimir issue is something they're going to have to deal with, but if they can start winning fights consistently, mm -hmm. um, they'll be fine. Yeah, so right now, I mean, Vlad's got a good 500 gold lead over Lee Sin. Right. Got a level as well. Vlad's about like halfway to 9. Vlad's halfway to 10. So yeah, that's just all that time killed, and you can just go ahead and just stick up top and stay farming, because they're only, you know, Type A Assassins, you know, their graves, Bebe was not with the team when Dragon was being taken out, so a little bit of disadvantage, but there's the ult coming down from Vlad and the pool, trying to chunk out Weeson just enough, and the finish of the ult will not be enough. Oh, the flash from Vladimir. Did not, was not in range, was not in range. And but now he doesn't Annie. have it up for Annie, who is coming in, the, the Dominator, Tibbers, the Tibbers is Harbinger not here. There's Doom. the Q and the W, more than enough to take out the Vlad, trying to get back yeah. to the tower. So Taipei Assassins, you know, they've, uh, right now, despite the fact that they're down three kills, gold is pretty much even. So it's still, you know, nothing terrible, but stuff like that cannot be happening again, or else the gold may sway. Well, the big thing to consider is Taipei Assassins has had a nice little farm lead, um, and the dragon, but, yep. you know, all in carry, they've negated that. They've negated the farm lead, which brings themselves back in this game where they can, you know, show some aggression. Mm -hmm. We're actually seeing... Bebe actually going with that Brutalizer build also. So hmm. this is really interesting to see this, um, you know, on these ADs from this uh, scene. And Brutalizer is a really strong item. I think a lot of people underestimate how strong it is. That You know, everyone yeah. is constantly uh, clamoring for an upgrade path for Brutalizer. I like, agree. Oh, I want an upgrade path. I hate that concept. Like, <laughs> Brutalizer in and of itself is such a strong item. The only thing that makes Brutalizer not a must-buy on every single AD carry in the game is the fact that it doesn't have an upgrade path it, that path if it did then you would see it every single game yeah like there's there would almost not be a reason to not get brutalizer um it would be interesting to see it you know come back into play uh, i've you know seen it on ash in the past in competitive play seeing it on graves now to get that uh physical damage is you know just really nice yeah i mean really like the only time i've ever seen yeah, like the, the, only, the only chance, oh ho, the squirrel actually going down uh, the graves. He may actually not be able to get out of this one, the Gatling gun, just barely out of range of the graves. Yeah, I think Bebe just sneezed there because he <laughs> threw himself into the tower. Um, yeah, I, I really don't know what was going yeah. on. I'm pretty sure it was a sneeze. We'll say, we'll say it was yeah, a we'll, sneeze. Yeah, we'll say it was a sneeze. But uh, I like the only champ I ever see Brutalizer actually finish into Yomu's. Very rare instances, like late game, you'll see it on a Nocturne. But I also see it uh, on the rare instance you see a Pantheon. And those are like really the only two I ever see people fully build into it. Yeah, I mean, it used to be a lot more common in the jungle, but um, I mean, there's, there's just not really a need. But Brutalizer in and of itself is actually a really strong item. Mm. Uh, it's just that, you know, Yumu's, there's not really a big need for the upgrade. But uh, we, we did see Yumu's on Malphite recently. So That's that was uh, well, that was cool. that, Well, that was... That was um, I, I say that was more of a ridiculous situation than anything else. It, it was worked, like, hey, it? He's just, he's did it or did it not work? Well, it did. It, it did work. He didn't quite yes. need it. Granted, he was stacking Solution. every GP10 in the game, but it's still working. There you go. Sona trying to get in onto the Corgi, but Lulu has to force the ult, and one more stray bullet will take her out, despite the fact that wild growth is used. But Sona will go down. Bebe should be able to win this exchange, and yes, double kill going down onto the Graves bot lane. Two for one. And Sona coming in. If Sona hadn't come in, then Graves actually would have lost that exchange. We have the Tibbers going on to Cassiopeia, but ult. it doesn't even matter. There's oh, the cast ult. The uh, noise you, tick, What? The double exchange. Wow. So wow, wow, wow. Cass recognizing, all right, I've got the poison damage. I have to get the hell out of here. But Annie with the pickup, <laughs> really nice job there. Um, and it was a nice play by Cassiopeia as well of that yeah. second because Graves would have died. So recognizing, all right, hey, I can let Graves win this, and then he's going to get a farm advantage, push into the tower, put Corky very far behind. Yeah, and, you know, I mean, it seems a little silly to have to, you know, go ahead and cleanse and flash away in a situation like that. But remember, Tibbers still has an AoE. And it can still hurt if you're just standing there. That's the reasoning behind that, but it still just was not enough. Still even trade. Yeah, no, definitely an even trade. And that's yeah. the thing. It's, uh, the you know, 1v1 when they're just kind of dueling it head-to-head. -head. Annie is actually at a slight advantage. It's just that Cassiopeia has a little bit more range and more harass advantage. Mm -hmm. um, but 
I don't know. It, it should be interesting to see how this goes later on in the game. Corky has plenty enough range where, you know, Corky should be able to sit outside of Cassiopeia's damage. Annie should be able to. Lulu should be able to. So it's really just Lee Sin and Amumu that are going to be vulnerable to that uh, Cassiopeia damage. And if you disrupt Cassiopeia, the fact that she has more persistent damage and not quite as much burst as uh, Annie does... Um, then you can maybe reduce some of her damage if she's, you know, if Cassiopeia has to be running and can't quite hit the right targets with her dots. Yeah. So uh, we'll have to see. I mean, having the Mumu and the Annie right up front could really shut down a lot of Cassiopeia's damage, particularly when the cleanse is down. And right now, it is down when it's up. You know, it was a really nice item choice. She didn't need the Ignite. She has plenty of damage otherwise. So getting that cleanse to, you know, avoid some of those disables. Both junglers actually picking up the oracles, and you know, it's been seeing this a lot, you know, early oracles can really help out, but Vlad is going to go ahead and just pick out, the, no, he's not going to go ahead and take out the tower completely yet, but at least in, he wants the damage, he wants to go ahead and try his luck, may not be the best idea, Vlad ult is up, he's still got his ignite, Leeson, I'm not sure if he can just go ahead and win that straight up one on one. But you know, there's still wars here to be cleared, and the moon's gonna go ahead and take care of that. But Dragon is back on up. The moon is good. Type A assassins, they're, they're, they're fishing for it. And they couldn't have a very well have a repeat of what happened last time, but the moon was a little bit out of position. The rest of the team needs to stay up. You gotta stay clumped if you're gonna be engaging for an, obje uh, an objective like that. Yeah, and we'll see. I mean, we do have a 4v4. Um, there's a little bit more burst, you know, just head on from uh, all in carry. So I don't, I don't think that Type A assassins wants to face them 1v1. They will have to watch out, out as the game progresses that Mundo doesn't become too, you know, tanky for them to deal with. So both Mundo and Vladimir, you know, they're, they're going to have two champions that are going to be pretty tough to take down. And if all in carry can't get their AoE going, that might be an issue. But if they can, if they can, you know, burst people down, Corky has plenty of follow-up potential. It can, you know, just destroy the rest of them. Uh, they know all the wards are cleared out. I'm a little bit surprised they haven't checked the one inside the pit. Um, you know, so that they can maybe pursue that. Actually, the ultimate Tibbers, and there's the Q, wow. and then Corky as well for the quick pickup. And see, that's the thing, too. You know, whoever gets the first initiation is usually going to be a man up. And there you go, Annie, with just blowing everything on the Cassiopeia was more yeah. than enough with a little bit of help some friends. And there you go, Dragon. And now they see the war in the pit. Should that's be able to secure Dragon. So all we carry should be able to grab this pretty easy. And it's interesting, uh, Annie versus Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia normally has the range advantage and the abilities. But Annie's ult is significantly longer range than Cassiopeia's ult. So the fact that mm. Annie has that long range stun initiation, we do see oh, Lee Sin and Amumu are with here. The well, there's the move. <laughs> right there with the ult in the middle of everyone while still in the bushes and just funneling in, trying to get the kill, trying to get something happening on Mundo. He is ignited, will not get away from that one. Lee Sin just barely with his own shield and a Hextrigger shield should be able to get away to safety, but uh, may not save the same for Cork. He does have to flash away the way from Lee Sin, trying to get some vision, trying to get something, trying to get away. Shield to any to safety two for one yeah and they just they didn't have the follow-up damage at that point um you know they were able to get a couple of them pretty low vladimir not the target that you want to be focusing he's mm -hmm. just going to pull out of there so amumu and lulu are both going down uh vladimir will be able to go back he is really far ahead at this point in time going with that early um cages that's definitely nice yep. And, you know, not to mention that during that fight, during the fight, uh, Mundo's ult was actually down, so he did not have the regen he needed, and, you know, he was actually just caught out, ignited, and chunked out. So, it, even though it does a pretty... But regardless, pretty, yeah. they're more than fine with uh, Mundo taking all the damage, even without his ultimate. He's, you know, the most tanky of the team. It's it's such an effort for them to take him down, and getting that MR uh, with the Spirit Visage is really nice. Yep, so uh, Cassiopeia going to go ahead and grab the blue, take that back to mid. Annie, you know, still you have a fallen tower to defend, but you know you still got the kit, you still got the tools to do everything you need, and you can still go ahead and just take out Cassiopeia straight out once Tibbers is up, which it is. But Cast does have a level advantage up on Annie right now, so it's going to be uh, not uh, actually that's that actually is a pretty pretty huge gap actually now that I, it's about a, almost a full level here. You know, Annie just dinged 13, so it's a little bit to catch up on, but nothing too huge now actually now, now that I notice. But now Oracles. Onto Sona, seeing you know, Mundo died during that last fight. He lost his, so that's a rebuy that needs to happen. Just walking, wandering right on into the cork. He does have the Valkyrie away though, once he realizes Mundo is there. But Amumu is not too far behind. May actually make something happen here. Annie and Lee Sin, they're in the mid, baiting. Amumu's just, you know, come on, come on down up the ramp. We got a present for you. But there is a ward over by the race. The Annie and Lee, uh, Lee will get seen. But look at Stanley. Once yep. again, just sticking top lane, not moving. Yeah, both games just, you know, playing a top lane where he can just sit up top, 
shut down the lane. Not that big of a deal. We do see all in carry trying to get up there, see if he's going to maybe uh, continue pushing. They will pick up this blue for Annie, so that'll be pretty easy. Um, yeah, so I mean, we'll see. It, it is a very even game right now. Type A Assassins has a few uh, early leads, and the big thing is that Vladimir is farming well. And to have that advantage, Vladimir over uh, Lee Sin, Vladimir is the highest yep. uh, damage to uh, top carry in the game as the game progresses. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll see how that works. Vladimir is extremely farmed once he finishes like a Rabadon's or uh, if he goes for a Rylai's or, you know, a Zonia's he's, or something. He's got his DFG. Yeah. He's got his DFG, so he's go ahead, you know, pop pool, DFG someone. This a pretty huge chunk of damage. And also, you know, right now, in comparison to his lane opponent, Lee Sin is about 1,500 gold behind at this point. And you know, Lee Sin, you know, he does require a good amount of items to try and you know, just stay in these fights. No, Sona happening to walk into that bush. There's an Annie, there's the Tibbers, and that's just a bad time. That's just a bad day. Amumu with the flash ult, next gain getting the tail end of Cassiopeia. Cleanse a little bit too late though, but there's still a bunch. Wow. Wow, everyone just to the force. I'm going to have to go ahead and take a look at that again, but we have a Lee Sin being caught out. There is the buckshot. I got to take a look at that again because well, that was just murder. The big thing is uh, Taipei Assassins, it's a 4v5 situation, but all yeah. they can carry really overestimated their strength and not having the Annie. Uh, the Amumu ult, there was no follow-up. Wow. On it. So the Amumu was primarily just there for holding them in place. You didn't really have all this burst AoE damage and they forgot, hey, you're walking into a Cassiopeia and Vladimir and Graves, that's, you know, just the three of them alone could ace your team if you're all clumped up. All in carry, they did clump up because they were they were thinking to themselves, victory, we've lo we've won this already, we picked off Sona, but they, they just forgot about how much damage Taipei Assassins yeah. was going to be dealing in the meantime. And this actually could be a Baron because Cassiopeia well, yeah. Graves are two of the strongest, you know, we, ADs are always strong, but Cassiopeia is one of the strongest Baron dealers in the game. They will get very low, but with, do they have a Will of the Ancients? No, they have a Hextech. Uh, we'll see whether or not this works out, because they, be they should be okay. I mean, there is the lifesteal on Graves. Might be able to go ahead and take it long enough. Just go ahead and switch up the yep. tanks. Yes, no problem. No problem whatsoever. And, you know, Mundo's... I think everyone everyone was up. Everyone got it. Yeah. Perfectly timed. But yeah, yeah now yeah. Type A Assassins is just in such a huge lead right now. Um, do they have an Aegis on Sona? No, they don't. No. Uh, an Aegis would definitely be nice to counter out some of that AoE. Or even if we saw a... Uh, I can't even remember the name. Ionian... Um, shield of an Ionian something. It's been so long. Oh, the, like, the we iron, haven't the seen iron Solari. It in a iron Solari. That's right. There you go. Uh, you know, it's it's just it's not an item that you see very commonly, but it does have its strengths. You know, it would be something nice to counter out some of that AOE. They just need a little bit yeah. of tankiness. Uh, you know, Cassiopeia going with that fast abyssal scepter, so she recognizes. Okay, uh, Vladimir, he's going to be dealing plenty of damage if I shred their magic resist a little bit, and then I don't want to die to Annie. Boom, Abyssal Scepter uh, definitely works out nicely. And just with that gold advantage and with the regen, if we don't see the perfect initiation from all in carry where they just insta-kill, you know, two or three members of Taipei Assassins, mm -hmm. then Taipei Assassins should actually win these longer exchanges with Vladimir and with Cassiopeia and Graves. Yeah, I mean, the, the big thing about that last fight, too, is just that, like, you know, oh, white right now, Lulu actually getting caught out by Graves. Does wild growth, but may not actually be enough. Well, actually, no, Umumu's here just for a little bit of safety. Uh, but no, the last fight, you know, one of the big initiations for ALC was Tibbers. Yeah. And it was all used to just kill a face-checking Sona. Everyone was there. It didn't even need to use a Tibbers. Just a Q and a W. You had the rest of the team there to take out Sona. That would have been enough, but you used Tibbers. That's, you know, one of your main big tools of initiation, and you used it. Yeah, that's definitely an issue. We do see... Uh, Bebe and Mistake going to be taking down that bottom turret while the rest of them are roaming. So again, you know, pulling the presence around for all in carry. We'll see if uh, Mundo actually tries to bait out this Annie ultimate maybe. You know, he recognizes, hey, I'm pretty tanky. No big deal. If go. I go down, my team will win the fight. Going around the back, trying to hunt out something, trying to find something, just throwing some cleavers, getting what he can, does not get the move of that one, but that's enough time killed to go ahead and grab the tier two in the mid. And the interesting thing is, um, Graves is very short range. He usually struggles at pushing down towers. It's it's usually something where most teams, you can stall out a Graves push. However, because they have the oh, AOE, Annie. they know they can catch him. Oh, oh the there's Sona. a Sona ult, and Annie should almost be going down, but there's the Amumu ult encounter, but the Vlad pull should be enough to go ahead and pick up the rest of the damage. Amumu does go down next, and right now, Lisa is just caught away from everyone else. Lulu trying to get away, and right. <laughs> Corky. Corky just trying to fly away. He's like, no, 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 you guys can go ahead and just 
finish the rest of that out. But wait, this is this is a pretty bad situation for ALC. You know, four having for four free. members down and having having inhibitor. four having four members down and having everyone else on the other team is up and they have Baroness. Uh, they just, yeah. could very well lose here. I'm actually a little bit surprised that Taipei Assassins isn't just pushing that Nexus, but um, they're a little bit safe. concerned. They won't finish it. Maybe they'll get caught off while they're in the middle of a tower or something. They should have been able to take down the two towers and back off, but uh, that's fine. You this know, the, they recognize the how far play. ahead they are. Right. This, this is the safe play. Just want to go ahead but and secure the lead, secure the kills. That last fight, they you know recognize. All right, if we just negate Annie's damage, we don't you know, have to worry about her ultimate, or we kind of are split up. And you saw they were split up pretty nicely. Vladimir, you know, he was pulled. Uh, very quickly, they're able to win these fights and. You know, we're just not getting that kind of burst follow-up that we need from uh, all lane carry. Yeah. And Taipei you, Assassin's just, you know, excellent job there. Excellent job, excellent initiation, and just, you know, having great, fantastic focus as well. Everything was there. This is just the perfect, perfect fight to go ahead and secure their lead. They're about 11k up. They're all going to back. They're all getting, you know, topping off, we're buying, you know, getting back, you know, even some more items just to go ahead and secure this. Got a Zonia's Han to uh, Cassiopeia along with the Abyssal. Nice thing, Rylai's on Vlad. Go ahead and you know, get some extra health on him as well. For, you don't see Force of Nature all too often, but you know, Mundo, he's a good guy to have it. And there's you know, the last whisper on two graves. He's 707, man. Those yeah. buckshots, those buckshots hurt, you know, five minutes ago. They're still going to hurt immensely now. Yeah, and so with the Oracles on Sona, they can clear out the map. They will be able to pressure all these lanes. They could just, you know, as a group, go top lane. Um, they recognize, all right, you know. They can't fight us head on. We'll just continue pushing it. We already have the mid down. Easy win. No big deal. So now it's just a matter of you know, getting the slow push on. Cassiopeia is down bot. We're going to go ahead and split push there. Mundo, he's top lane. Low ball just going to go ahead and clear out this wave as well. Just make sure in every lane is pushing. Ward going down in front of the Baron pit. You know, Baron is uh, Baron is gone, so it's just going to be about uh, three minutes when it comes back up again. Perfectly timed for that ward. And Mundo, he has to pop the ult. He does recognize that ALC is all around here, all around Baron area, looking for a fight. But meanwhile, in bot lane, there is Cass with all the poison. Doing a pretty good job pushing the lane, pushing the tower. And same thing, you does know, Lulu, Graves is here. Does Lulu have an Oracles? No, Lulu she doesn't. does not. So here's the big pick thing words. that ALC needs to do in order to get back into this game. They have plenty of burst damage. They need to pick off members of Taipei Assassins without forcing a full fight. They can't win a full fight at this point in time. So what they need to do is get that Annie ultimate. Just burst someone down and then get the hell out of there. Don't even worry about it. We do see a Mumu maybe kind of caught off. He should be okay. Graves doing some wow. damage top. Or Bob uh, mid. So if they, if they sit back and try and pick people off, that'll be great. If they had, you know, oracles, they could clear out some of these wards that Taipei Assassins maybe can't get a sneak attack on them. We do see they're kind of sitting up here, uh, just going to be pushing down this top yeah. tower. There's not, not a whole lot to be done about this. Though. It's a pretty decently sized wave. The ch you know, the burst, da the chunk damage is there. Just go ahead and take out the towers without a problem. And even then, you know, the Sona ult's up, Cassiopeia ult is up. It's just a matter of getting the ult down and focusing out one or two members of uh, ALC before their huge initiations come in. Nice, fancy footwork from Lee Sin as well. you got to go ahead and note that as well. There's some try and get some uh, free quick harass as well. But you know, there's a pretty, you know, there's a there's the minion wave pushing on in mid with super minions, and that's a that's that's a terrible thing to be dealing with as well. If, if, if you have all lanes pushing with waves, yeah, and Taipei Assassins actually heading down, down bot, but but uh, because they went through the uh, base instead of outside of the base, they zoned out all lane carry. So all lane carry never had an opportunity to engage. We do see there's the flash wow. Cassie B ultimate. A Mumu goes down immediately and very quickly they win this fight. The Lulu ultimate just barely keeping Corky alive but they are pushing down these Nexus turrets. It is a 5v4, and everyone is looking pretty for Taipei Assassins. Yeah, the Cassie Peel didn't even need to turn him into stone. Just the damage enough, just from the fright, was more than enough to kill Omibo. And there's Tibbers. Not going to get a whole off on that. Cleanse goes down on Cassie Peel to ensure some safety. Lulu is, is going to make it back to base. Not, not sure if you're going to go ahead and save the same for Lee Sin. No. Corky, once again, the only one alive. May actually die in Fountain to all this harass, but the Nexus is open, it is there, and that is game. Taipei Assassins emerging victorious 3-0 in Group A, so they're going to be in the champ bracket for sure. All Wayne Carey is going to have to go ahead and fight it out in the wild card pool. Yeah, really awesome play all around by Taipei Assassins. Um, they looked really strong, and there, there was a period of time where all lane carry, they were able to pick up a couple of kills. They were able to, you know, have advantages in fights, and it, it looked like uh, maybe they would pick up the win there, but 
Type A assassins turning it around on them. They yeah. were able to get the nice initiation, just you know, easily win a couple of team fights in a row, get ahead, and it was over. You know that the the big turning point was that fight in mid. Annie wasting tibbers on mm -hmm. the Sona, and just everyone was clumped up in the mid, more than enough for Graves to just wreak absolute havoc. Yeah. There's the ult. Oh, but but he, he, got, he got more damage on the buckshot than he did the ult. Having the armor pen with those physical damage abilities is actually it, it's, it's, it's a nice thing. So it's pretty good. Um, it'll be inter interesting to see if we see more uh, players, you know, yeah. having that kind of a build. I might have to, you know, I might have to start, you know, building brutalizer in some of my AD carries now. I've I know a couple of people. I, I used to do it, but I, I'm trying to remember who used to do it uh, on Ash, running brutalizer and Ionian boots. So you go, huh. you use Ash as more of a utility uh, AD carry. And, you know, you want to farm into the lake, and you want to be really strong, clearly. But uh, you get your ultimate down to, like, a 40-second cooldown. And every time your ultimate's up, uh, you're going to be able to pick someone off as a team. And so it's a, it's a team support kind of thing as your AD carry rather than a full DPS build. And then also having the volley spam, you have, like, a four-second cooldown on your volley. So good. you can constantly kite or constantly, <laughs> you know, uh, chase people down. It's actually a pretty interesting build. Yeah, and not to mention, you know, you got the, ho the hawk shots on a pretty huge right. cooldown. So it's just even more vision. You yeah. know, it, it's taking 30% off of a, like, what is it, like a minute 40%. cooldown? 40%. So 40% off, of, yeah, 40% off a minute cooldown. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. You know, it's it's you know, do some math, do some math. So these are uh, your ending results here uh, for Group A. So Type A Assassins emerges 3-0, moving on. Uh, all in carry going to be 2-1. They're going to be moving on to uh, to the wild card. Time to terminate ends out the group stage 1-2. And uh, Hana unfortunately has to be uh, has to be the uh, yep. the last ones here. Oh, One thing great. I was just considering: could you imagine Urgot if there was a brutalizer upgrade path? It's already oh, wow. such a devastating item on him to go brutalizer that and is... then uh, frozen heart. If you could then upgrade the brutalizer, you know what? That is an issue, actually. Really, the thing is just it's mm. the brutalizer. It gives you armor pen, it gives you damage, and it gives you cooldown reduction. Right. There is currently no other item that gives you. Armor pen and cooldown reduction for an AD carry, um, you know, having that early armor pen as a, as opposed to the big investment of a last whisper is huge, and having that flat armor pen and then the cooldown reduction. So, if you want cooldown reduction, you're going to get brutalizer. It's it's very strong as a, as a stat, hmm. and to be able to then upgrade that into a full item that will put you up to 200 damage is just like wow, that's that's insane. So it is. Um, yeah, I, it'd be really difficult to balance. Really, Brutalizer would need a nerf in order for them to give it an upgrade path. I can see, you know what? Actually, let's let's. I can actually see how. Uh, let's, let's let's consider this for a moment. Um, instead of having it deal like so much damage, maybe we can have it do like a little bit of crit. Have Avers Blade of all things built into it. So you have you know. So now we have another build path for a GP10 item. Why would we want to give Brutalizer crit? Why are we I mean, we're looking for nerfs? We're looking for I don't know. I don't know. That's just, just a wild thought. Crit. That's crit it. all the things. Why not? Let's get let's give crit onto the cooldown boots. Why not? Done. Crit po. Yep. Yeah, you know, I was. We already have a crit potion. Yeah, we do. What am I thinking? Crit on death cap. Crit on know. abilities? No. Well, not not going to happen. <laughs> I don't know. Crit on abilities. Would I don't be know. Terrible. We're just we're just thinking of wild ideas here. Uh, this is this is this is not the time for. This is this is why we don't make items for riot. This is why we don't make champs for riot. This is I I don't want that job. I'd be terrible at it. <laughs> I don't know. But either way, that's that's it for Group A for the uh, the Taiwan qualifiers. May actually have a Group B for you next week. So depending on how things go, I believe Group B is then actually rounding out this uh in this weekend. But uh, also, what do we have? Uh, what do we have tonight for NA? I believe. Was it it's, uh, TSM, EVO, and Absolute Legends NA? Yeah, I think no, that's, that's, that's correct. Tonight. Yeah, so we go ahead. You know, do please stick around for that tonight. But, uh, yeah, yeah, thanks for joining us. It's always a pleasure to have you here on the IPL stream. And, as always, you know, got to go through all this as well. Be sure to follow up with everything we're doing at the IGN Pro League here on Twitter and on Facebook at IGN Pro League, IPL LL on Twitter and on uh, on Twitch and on YouTube. And as always, send us your top, send us your flops. We want your replays, IPL LL, replays at gmail.com. And for that, I believe we are done for now. So do join us tonight for the NA broadcast. And, uh, hey, apart from that, thanks for joining us. Good night. <laughs>